And here we go. We're starting over because you didn't really need to hear the sound check. The microphone works. We have confirmed this. Oh, what's up, y'all? It's the day after Thanksgiving, whatever, what is it, 29th? 29th of November? Something, November. Year of our Lord and Savior, Trump and Fear. Man, I'm tired. Oh. Yesterday was a good day. Got stuff done. I've not seen people. Ah, shit. Do I have any eye drops in here? Oh, they're fuck. They're way over there. I just sat down. I'm, I'm so tired I'm doing the podcast sitting down. If you've been around here, you know that I don't usually do the podcast sitting down. Oh. Because... My energy levels are much better if I'm standing up. <sighs> Alright, give me a second. I drop in some eye drops, then I'm gonna start talking about semi relevant stuff. I'm gonna try to stay as much as I can try. <laughs> Stay focused in this episode. So I'll skip all the other stuff that I was about to tell you about. I will just say that I'm, I'm tired. I was having a good productive day today. It's getting, thing done, getting things done. Scratch some stuff off the do list. Fucking lifted weights. Went to the swimming pool. Swum some laps. Swum. Swum. Swam. Swam some laps. It was good. That's the first time I've been swimming in ages. Especially like real swimming as opposed to just getting in a pool. <clears throat> kind of fucking around. Actually getting in the pool and saying, I am going to swim back and forth multiple times. Actually swim for exercise. Holy fuck, man. That's a lot of work. Worked some muscles that I had forgotten I had. And I did this literally, literally Hitler right after going to the gym. Oh, man. So anyway, I'm back. I'm at home. I'm on the computer. I'm doing some stuff. And I'm thinking, man, this day's going great. I'm getting so much done. There's got to be something wrong. Obviously, there's something is wrong because things are going way too good. And I realized what it was, is that I hadn't gotten around to recording a podcast yet. I mean, not that I necessarily have to record a podcast today, but I should. Since we are being serious and I'm just doing stuff, let me throw this out. If you're new around here, if you have been here for less than a year, you should know that I am just about to go into my busy season of work. And you may or may not get three podcasts a week between here and Christmas. And the three podcasts you may or may not get may or may not be repeats of old podcasts because I may or may not have time to record anything. This is the part of the year where I work 100-hour work weeks and there's not a lot of podcast recording time. Now, speaking of going to the gym and time, as you can tell from the title, we're going back and we're revisiting some of the commentary I got from people on my podcast about having a sterile life. And I know that TJ Martinell and the goddamn Bacon have both done something on their podcast where they talked about my podcast. I know this from the show notes, and Bacon sent me an email. I still haven't listened to either of those, but they are actually on my MP3 player right now, so they're coming up. So when I get to those, I will listen attentively and take notes and do some responses and build on whatever it is that they said. But for right now, I still got these two emails. One of them I read previously, and we went through it. And I was not completely satisfied with all of my answers to it, but it was what it was. And then the other one we haven't gotten to yet. So I want to jump in on both of these. Now I want to go back. I want to revisit this email that I got from 
Shit, where's the man's name? Law. It was I think it's Law. So I printed your email, but I didn't print any of the header or anything like that with your name on it. So if I'm fucking that up, that's just because I'm an idiot. It's fine. Anyway, the part I want to talk about, where is it? Solutions, money, get me, women's. Okay, here we go. Let me just read this paragraph to put it in context. And next up is you talking about the lack of marriable women in your vicinity. Nigger, you live in a lefty city in America. That's like trying to find a needle in a stack of hay. If marriage and progeny were really all that important to you, I'm sure you have, you'd have absolutely no hesitation moving about like a vagabond from town to town, state to state. Whether abroad in your, whether abroad in your country... What? Oh, I get it. Whether abroad in your country... Saying there's no women's I can marry is an excuse, not a reason. You get me? It's like saying you can't get fit because there's no gym in your immediate era. Area. Immediate era. Yeah, there's no gyms in my era. I was born in the wrong era. Gyms haven't been... They, we don't have heavy objects yet. They haven't been invented. It's like saying you can't get fit because there's no gym in your immediate area. If you really want to get in shape, you wouldn't let the lack of a nearby gym stop you from getting what you want. I know you better than anyone. I know you know better than anyone that when you put in the work, effort, and time, you get results. Here's the thing. This is almost a good analogy, but it's not quite a good analogy. And here's why. Here's because I tried to talk about how going to the gym and getting fit is not quite the same as getting married and having children. And I didn't articulate it very well. I think I can articulate it better. Okay. That's me drinking coffee. I'm having a cup of coffee. It's, uh, okay, it's almost 1800. I've started having one cup of coffee late in the day and I find it actually helps me out. I also just ate. When I say just ate, I mean I finished eating about an hour and a half ago. And like a moron, I ate way too much food. That's another reason why my energy level is so fucking low. I ate too much. Saying there's no women's I can marry is like saying you can't get fit because there's a gym. Okay. Yes and no. I see what you're saying, and I agree with what you're saying about if you identify a deficiency in your life, you move towards rectifying it, or you take action towards rectifying it. Getting fit is not equivalent to getting married and having children. Getting fit is equivalent to approaching girls and eventually going out on dates. The equivalent to getting married and having children is winning the Mr. Universe competition. Okay, so now let me explain that. There's a difference between moving... Okay, no, no, there's a difference between making progress in a given direction versus attaining a very specific and defined end result. Do 
To become more fit is to move in a general direction. Right? Today, I endeavored to become more fit. I did squats. I did bench presses. I did whatever that is where you incline bench presses with barbells. Um, I did that other thing. I did curls. I did swimming. Because I did some things that take me in the general direction and make me physically healthier. But I have not won the Mr. Universe competition. Because winning the Mr. Universe competition is a very specific, detailed thing that requires some very specific steps. And you have to be in some specific places at some specific times. And there are a great number of requirements to be fulfilled in order to be crowned Mr. Universe. They even have Mr. Universe competition anymore, or is that not acceptable any longer? I'm sure women are competing in it if they do still have it. So now the equivalent when it comes to the women's is you can go out and you can approach girls and ask them out and some of them will occasionally say yes. And of the ones that occasionally say yes, some of them will occasionally follow through and say respond to your text message. And of the ones that occasionally follow through and respond to your text message, some of them will agree to a date, and of the ones that agree to go out with you, a small percentage of them will occasionally actually show up. So now going out and approaching women and you know trying to get a number or asking them out or however direction you take it after you approach them, okay, that's moving you in a general direction. It's like going to the gym. But is just as going to the gym is a far, far cry from being crowned Mr. Universe, okay, approaching women is a far cry from getting married to a quality woman, not just to the first hoe that fucking says yes. Okay, and I'll we'll, we'll go into that more in a second. Okay, that's a far cry from getting married and having children. Because once again, just like winning Mr. Universe, there are specifications to this. To become Mr. Universe, there are specifications for what you must eat all the time for your diet on an ongoing basis for your workout routine, for entering into the competition, their specifications, whatever they are, I don't know. You know, for the competition, you have to do whatever you have to do. Say it's a fucking curl, right? You have to do the curl and you have to do the curl correctly according to the regulation way that you have to do a curl, whatever it is, or a bench press, right? The bench press, you have to, whatever it is, lock your elbows or not lock your elbows. You have to bring the bar down so it touches your chest. And maybe it has to stay there for five seconds. I don't know. But there are very specific requirements that must be fulfilled for you to become Mr. Universe. And it takes a large amount of dedication and it takes a large amount of time. And you can't wait Unless you're a rare individual, and there are some, and once again, you don't just, ah, yes, I know, you know this one woman. I get it. You know this one woman, and she was 73 years old, and she had triplets, and they came out healthy, and she's the CEO of a corporation, and she fucking converted, fucking competed in the Mr. Universe competition, and she won. Yes, I get it. You know this one fucking woman. Bravo for you. The average person, you know, normal people, 
average people, when they're 50 years old, do not go forth and say, hey, I, I just woke up, I'm, fi I'm 50 years old. I've been doing all these stupid things all my life as far as fitness and diet and everything. I think I'm going to start working towards winning the Mr. Universe competition. Now, you can certainly do that, but the statistical odds of you winning are very small. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but statistically speaking, it's very small. Now, you can go forth and you can approach women and you can even date women and you can even fuck women and you know you can even play house with some chick and move in with her. But once again, we're not talking about just knocking some chick up and getting married and having a kid you can't afford and being unhappy, okay? Because I would argue, and I'm not going to argue this now, but I'm willing to argue that that's worse than having a sterile life. So, when the Great One says, he, you, them, whoever it is, right, should be going forth and seeking to marry a woman and to have children and to reproduce and surround themselves with life. I'm talking about quality people here. I'm not just talking about the first overweight single mother with a half-breed child, right? Who's ready to settle down because she's finally finished partying at 42. Now, as a man, in order to locate a quality woman who doesn't have kids and tattoos and purple hair, you know, and all and and bipolar disorder and student debt and credit card debt and daddy issues and all this other stuff takes a lot of time. You can't start when you're 50. I can't start when I'm 50. You can't start with, I know, I know, there's this one, I know, you know this one guy, and he was 63 years old, and he met this 27-year-old woman, and she was beautiful, and they fell in love, and they got married, and he's got three healthy children, and she's totally loyal to him, and she homeschools the children, and he makes six figures. I know, you know this one guy. That's great. Once again, talking about normal people, talking about most people out there. I'm talking about myself, but I'm also talking about pretty much everyone else. Any man on the planet Earth, if he's 50 years old in the current year, 2019, and decides, hey, I'm 50 years old, I'm now going to start looking for a quality woman to have children with, who is going to stay home and raise the children and homeschool them, good fucking luck. The odds are severely stacked against you. Now, certainly, this same guy, me or who else, can go out and approach girls and date and all this other horse shit. But you have to be realistic. You can lower your standards. Once again, sure, you can lower your standards and you can marry some single mother with three kids by two baby daddies. But that's not what I'm talking about. Right? It's kind of like you can decide, instead of deciding I am going to compete to become uh, Mr. Olympus or what is it, Mr. Universe, and instead you can say, well, I'm just going to go compete in my local Tough mutter competition that allows fat women in it and where everybody gets a fucking performance award participation trophy right i mean you can do that but that's not on the same level as being mr universe in manning up and marrying 
some broad with three kids by two baby daddies who's a single mother with bipolar disorder and credit card debt and daddy issues, that that's not the same as locating a quality woman. And so your go to the gym to become fitter analogy, I mean, it goes in the right direction. It, it has the correct spirit, but it's not quite the same thing. So hopefully, because hoping is not a process, but hopefully I articulated that better this time around than I did the previous time around. Because Law wrote a very intelligent email here with paragraphs and correct spelling and punctuation, all the, none of the things that Aaron Clary gets over at assholeconsulting.com. So I want to be sure and do it justice because it deserves to be done justice because he put a lot of work into this. Next up, we have an email also from, at least according to the IP address from Australia, from Melbourne or Melbourne or Melbourne or whatever the hell you say it. If Adam Piggott was here, he could say it correctly. Dimitri? Does he sign off? Did I print? All right, here we go. Here's what I th Dim Dimitri J. I don't. Oh, okay. I think I get it. Dimitri, and I think from your email address, I know what your last name is, which I won't say because we're not here to get anybody in trouble. And God, you're in Australia. You guys are even more cucked and fucked than we are in the States. Anyway, here's what Dimitri's got to say. That's not Dimitri, that's the clock. If Dimitri could say that, I'd be impressed. It's easy to see taking the God pill as a coping mechanism, but it doesn't actually fix the problem to which you're referring. I've taken the God pill and I'm pretty bummed about being single and childless in clown world, but ultimately it is about there being some meaning and talos to life, suffering, and the universe. Atheism is a moral and philosophical dead end, and people like Krauser and Roosh realize this. Now, he makes a statement here that atheism is a moral and philosophical dead end. I don't think he actually supports this statement. And I think this is where a lot of the God-pilled people get confused. Because remember, God-pilled people are God-pilled because they found religion. And by found religion, we mean they just adopted the religion they were born into. Right? Nobody who is God-pilled sits down and makes a chart of all the pros and cons of all the different religions and then rationally thinks it through. They either go with the religion they were born into or they go with the religion which is the closest. No, very, I shouldn't say nobody because once again I know you know this one woman. You know, very few people sit around and try to figure out, well, what are my belief systems? And then go forth and find a church that matches those. Especially since if, in fact, if before you're seeking a church, if before you're seeking a religion to tie yourself to, if you are in a moral and philosophical dead end, then I suppose you can't really know what kind of values you have because without religion, according to Dimitri, you're in a moral and philosophical dead end. So if you're going to tell me that not believing there's an invisible man in the sky is a moral and philosophical dead end, I do need to see some kind of support for that statement, not just the statement. What the fuck is going on outside? Hold on. 
Okay, don't, don't go away. I gotta check something out here. All right, as what I thought it is. It's fucking raining. Great, and the rain is gonna freeze, and everything's gonna be a fucking ice-coated shitstorm in the morning. Doesn't get any better than that. Without a transcendent reality, you're left with nothing but deterministic materialism, which reduces us to a bunch of cells randomly firing off in accordance with arbitrary physical and chemical laws. Well, I mean, yeah, yes and no. But you're still just firing off with physical and chemical laws even if there is a God. I mean, you still have neurochemistry. The invisible man in the sky doesn't circumvent neurochemistry. Ultimately, you have no free will since your consciousness is just the product of some chemical reaction and no reason to feel any sense of joy when hearing a great piece of music, holding a beautiful woman, or gazing in wonder at a majestic landscape. The phenomenal order present in the universe would just be an amazing accident. Well, it is an accident. What's interesting to me is the people that did it really stop raining? Which means it's turned into snow because we are supposed to get snow tonight. Oh no, now it's back again. It was a momentary lull. The people who need God to give them meaning aren't that different, and by aren't that different, I mean aren't different from the people who need the government to give them meeting. Meaning, not meetings. God, nobody needs meetings. The argument that most people religious people put forth that you can't have meaning in your life without God and it baffles the fuck out of me. My life has plenty of meaning. And if your life doesn't have meaning without belief in some invisible man in the sky, I have to question if your life has any fucking meaning. Because, okay, if the invisible man in the sky was like telling you what to do or something, talking to you, sending you text messages, okay, then maybe so. And I'm sure, I'm guessing that I would be told, well, but God tells us what to do through the Bible and the scriptures. Okay, but those are written by people. And God help you if you tell me that God tells you what to do. Get See what I did there? God help you if God tells you what to do via, you know, your pastor. Because your preacher is just another human. And of course, the other big problem with the God-pilled people is that your religions are cucked as fuck. And once again, yes, I know that you know this one religion that's not cocked. I mean, even the Mormons are becoming cocked. Okay, so you've got the Muslims, like the real Muslims, the ones who stone women to death for going outside without a male escort. And then, and I, by no stretch of imagination am I an expert on religion, but you've got the more, this is just my understanding, which could be completely wrong, you've got the more orthodox religions, such as 
the one that Roosh is saying he was at some point Roosh was talking about being part of the religion. It's orthodox, blah 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 blah. Okay, so sure, maybe there are some religious sects out there that are still uncut. But Dmitri is in Australia, and just knowing what I know about Australia, mostly from Madam Piggott, I suspect that most of the religions there are cucked. And certainly here in the United States, you know, every form of Christianity... I mean, you drive around here in Fort Collins, and again, we, well, why don't you get out of Fort Collins? It's not going to be that different anywhere else. It's really not. Right? The idea that there's this, there's some conservative Christian uncucked enclave in the United States. It's not really a thing. And yes, as one person suggested, I could go to Poland where the hot chicks are at. And I could. You know, I could do a lot of things. I could run down the street naked. I could stick my dick inside of a fucking lawnmower. That's a really old reference. Many, 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 many years ago, I read this newspaper article about a man who was injured because he was injured. He put his penis, his penis, his cock, his dick, was cut off by the blade of a lawnmower. And I read that and I thought to myself, how in the hell? Why in the hell? First of all, how? Secondly, why do you put your dick any place near a moving lawnmower blade? So now that's one of my little code phrases that I use for things that are really fucking stupid. Right? When I tell them, what's the stupidest thing I could possibly do in my life? I could stick my dick in a lawnmower. So trying to hide from the cucking and trying to avoid the pain and trying to relieve myself of the burden of finding any meaning and purpose in my own life as if I were a fucking woman by getting God-pilled That, that doesn't sound like a good path for anybody who has high-functioning intelligence. Because when come, someone comes to me and they say, well, the only way you can have purpose and meaning in your life is if you accept God. That if you don't have religion, you're at a moral and philosophical dead end. No, what you're saying is that you without religion would be at a moral and philosophical dead end because you're too lazy, lazy, to do the work of reasoning out some morals and philosophical conclusions of your own. Just because the human brain is yeah, a, a slave to chemical word 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 chemical reactions, neurochemistry. That doesn't mean you have some don't have some kind of control over it. We do have consciousness. And I think I get what the God pill people are trying to say. Well, it's, but God gives you the soul, and it's the soul that makes you more than just the neurochemistry. Okay, and I can see where that's coming from. And once again, I understand where it's coming from because when you die, the neurochemistry stops. And if you are if your consciousness and everything you are is only the neurochemistry, and the neurochemistry stops when you die, well, guess what? That means you stop. And nobody, 
including yours truly, the great one himself, the founder of the Cynical Libertarian Society on the internet for 15 years, podcasting for 15 years. I mean, I don't want to stop. Who the fuck wants to stop? And so you create this thing called a soul that's going to allow you to live forever. And who doesn't want to live forever? I do. But we have also the problem that if God does exist, God is a fucking cuck. Because, yeah, the, well, but God has to let people suffer. No, my, this fucking, you have to suffer and all this other horse shit. No, no. If you're going to tell me that God is who God is in your Bible, you know, the guy who, I mean, how many people did God murder? God flooded the world and killed everyone. God destroyed entire cities. God's not a really great guy. In fact, the Old Testament God was not a cuck. Maybe we could actually use a little bit of that. If the fucking Old Testament God really is a thing, and he's actually not cucked, how come he doesn't smite some of your fucking enemies? You know how many fucking converts God could get? If he just smited all the fucking Muslims within the borders of the United States? Except, oh fuck, except that all of you are cuck. Anyway, where I was go, I got sidetracked for a second there. A little sidetrack and get sidetracked again. But see, he wouldn't get any converts because you're all cucked. Because you go to every church here in Fort Collins and it's the same everywhere else. Every church has signs outside of them. No matter who you are, we're your neighbors. Everyone is welcome. All the churches have rainbow flags. You know, and they fucking celebrate Gay Pride Month. And yes, I know, you know this one church where the pastor still has the balls to say homosexuals are going to burn in hell for being homosexual. Bravo. Bravo. But your religion, Christianity, has become cucked. And trying to find moral and philosophical purpose in life by clinging to a cucked religion sounds like a terrible fucking idea to me. <sighs> Similarly, let me continue reading. Similarly, if death is just eternal unconsciousness, well, it's not unconsciousness. There's no consciousness. It's nothing. Why should it matter if you don't pass on your genes? Well, here's why it matters. Because looking at it from the genetic standpoint, I mean, your DNA has survived this fucking long. I mean, okay, I mean, well, all right, hang on, I was about to say something. It's going to be funny and good, but it's actually might not be relevant. Let me think that through before I run my mouth. Damn, I really wanted to say that, but it's actually not valid. Let me look at this from a, let me come at this from a different side. So if death is just eternal unconsciousness, why would it matter if you don't pass on your genes? So let me try to parse what he's saying in this sentence, in this question. He's saying, if death is non-existence,
there's no, it doesn't matter if you pass on your genes or not. So death being non-existence means that passing on your genes is irrelevant. So life after death does make passing on your genes relevant. Because I'm trying to get the inverse of what he's saying. Because then my question here is, if there is a continued existence after death, if there is an eternal soul, why is that relevant to passing on your genes? Dimitri makes a lot of you know, interesting statements here. And again, this is also a very intelligent, well-written email. He uses punctuation and correct spelling and paragraphs, you know, like smart people do. And he's making some interesting statements, but he's not backing any of them up with any kind of reasoning, right? You know, atheism is a moral and philosophical dead end. Well, okay, I'm open to that conclusion. You want to give me some evidence? I guess not. And I mean, look, Dimitri, I'm not ragging on Dimitri. He's just banging out an email. He, he, maybe he doesn't have time to sit down and write a fucking 17-page thesis. Maybe Dimitri's got shit to do. Okay? So I'm not like calling him a fucking bad person or a fucking retard or anything. I'm just saying... And I'm right and he's wrong. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, I mean, I would, uh, you know, I would love to talk to Dimitri about all this stuff and like hash all this out and say, okay, let's, let's go through evidence. They would think this would be a very interesting conversation. So I wanted, to, that's one of the reasons I wanted to read this email. I mean, if, if death is the end of your existence, that's all the more reason to pass on your DNA as far as I'm concerned. And it, it's not necessarily, and this, this is going to sound a little bit shallow, I think, but maybe not. Hear me out. Think about this. Although it's less of a problem now. <sighs> Let's use T.J. Martinell as an example, because I often think about him. Because he talks about how he's got a rocking chair that his you know, grandparents or whatever brought with them as they were settling the plains and, you know, massacring Indians and raping Indian women and all the terrible things that white people do or whatever it was. But he's got this rocking chair that's been in his family since way back when. And on one hand, to say that, well, I like to have children so that I can pass on objects like my rocking chair. I mean, that does sound a little bit shallow. I mean, maybe it sounds a whole lot shallow. Maybe it sounds a little bit pointless. But give me a second to expand on this and let's see if it gets any better. I think this is becoming less and less of a thing because today we live in such a disposable society where people don't own things. This is something I could rant about ad nauseum. Later on, and I might do it. I'm going to touch on it very briefly here. That's what uh, Jerry Sandusky said to the children. People today, they spend money on stuff, but they don't own anything. Right? They buy a book, but they don't buy a book. They buy a Kindle. They pay Amazon for the book. But the book is on the Kindle. Amazon owns the book. They don't own anything. Right? They don't buy a movie on a DVD and own a DVD of a movie that they can access at any time and that can never be taken away from them. They pay for streaming from Hulu or Amazon or Netflix and they pay money to the corporations and they get access to the book or the movie or the TV series. But all of these things can be taken from them at any minute because they're electronic and they're digital and people don't own things. Then you look at like furniture. furniture. You buy your furniture at Walmart. It's made out of fucking cardboard. It is literally, literally Hitler 
disposable furniture. You know, and then we wonder why there's global warming and so much trash and everything when everybody has disposable furniture. Whereas, you know, whatever it is in this ideal time that I wasn't alive back then and maybe it didn't exist, I don't know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, when you couldn't just go to Walmart and buy a new desk, things were made to last. You made a desk and the desk was made out of oak and the desk was solid and that desk lasted you your entire life and you could give that to your children and your children wouldn't need to buy a desk because they'd have and it would be passed down and with it would go history and stories like tj martinell's rocking chair i mean one of the few things that i have is i have a coffee pot that belonged to my grandmother it's got the little fucking metal strainer filter there on top and you put your coffee grounds in there you put the water in the bottom you sit it on the stove and it gets hot and the water boils up through a little tube and, and you make coffee it's made out of metal the one little top piece at the top is made out of plastic as long as that plastic doesn't get broken and this was made however many years ago when shit was made to last i mean as long as that fucking coffee pot doesn't get run over by a fucking truck it'll work forever And while many of the things in our lives, you know, don't need to be passed on and carried down, there are some things like my record collection. Be nice to give those to somebody. I mean, hey, you know, if you're religious, don't, wouldn't you want to, I mean, don't you have, I mean, my God, guys, I'm a fuck, I don't believe there's God and I have the fucking family Bible. I do. Hang on. Fuck you, people. Oh, oh, I gotta get up. Oh, my legs. Damn, my, I'm serious. My legs are sore. Oh, fuck. Between the, between the squats? Oh, man. And then the swimming? Whew. Man, my legs are sore. Already. Normally, it takes a while for the legs to get sore. Here it is. My family Bible. The spine. Well, not the spine itself, but so there's a cover on the outside. And the cover is breaking apart over the spine. The spine is still good. It has a little cross on a chain, on a zipper, that you unzip to open the Bible. That's what that noise was. That was me unzipping the Bible. That's the sound of the pages. Here it is. Presented to my mother by my grandmother, October the 7th, 1955. My mother, who is now an atheist, used to, you know, be a believer. There's passages in here that she's underlined. This Bible's got pictures in it. Here's a, what is, does it say anything? It doesn't really tell, oh, here it is. Samaritan Torah. What is, who's this? Mount Gizem? There's a picture of the Wailing Wall. There's some people standing there by the Wailing Wall. There's some notes written in the margins. What is this? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It says, Lord invites us to pray on his conditions. On his conditions is underlined. Come in truth. She's pointing to a passage. What passage is this? The Lord is nigh unto all them 
that call upon him to all that call upon him in truth. All right, so I mean, I mean, here we go. This Bible was given to my mother by my grandmother, 1955. When I die, somebody's going to throw this in a trash can. It'd be nice if there was someone to give it to. They could say, hey, you know, this Bible this is given to me by my father. Blah, blah, blah. So once again, I don't know how you're making this connection that if death is the end, there's no reason to pass on your DNA. If death is the end, that's all the more reason to pass on your DNA because you're not going to live on through some immortal soul in heaven or hell or wherever the fuck you go. You're going to live on here on the planet Earth through your children and your children's children and so forth, through their memories of you and their stories of you and the important possessions you leave behind that they will pull out every now and then and say, hey, I'm, this is my this is the Bible I got from my father. And his grandmother, my great-grandmother, gave it to his mother, my grandmother. And, and here it is. And you live on in that memory. You live on in those stories. Continue reading. Why should you care that you won't leave a legacy? We just talked about this. In the face of suffering, why even why bother even living? Because as long as you're alive, there's a chance to do better. Uh, because the opposite of living is dying. And there are some forms of dying you can't control, like getting shot by somebody else or whatever. But there's also forms of dying you can control, such as killing yourself. And killing yourself is what pussies do, because pimps do not commit suicide. Some of you know what movie that came from. And I get it. He's trying to get really dark here because he's trying to get me to fucking swallow the god pill. And he's pulling out all the stops. He'd be, Good job, Dimitri. You're, you're an articulate writer. You're pulling out the stops. It just doesn't work on me. Why should you care that you won't leave a legacy? In the face of suffering, why bother even living? Well, and also because I want to laugh at stupid people. That's why. I mean, and again, I don't know if he's I mean, if he's speaking generally or if he's addressing me specifically. And we could go either way. You know, if he's speaking generally, why should people go on living in the face of suffering? Well, because everybody, I mean, Buddhism, life is suffering. We're suffering all the fucking time. You can't avoid suffering. If you're just going to kill yourself because you experienced a little bit of fucking emotional discomfort, I mean, what, are you a white woman from North America? And if he refers to me specifically, dude, I'm not suffering, okay? I have first world problems. I'm sitting here right now in my fucking cozy goddamn office with my computer recording my voice. When I'm done here, I'm debating if I'm going to go start a fire in the fireplace and read a book. You know, I got a fucking, I got four fucking computers. I got a flat screen television. I got a shit ton of books. I got coffee. I got food. I got warmth. I got a job. I, I have my dick. It hasn't been cut off by a fucking lawnmower. I have testosterone. I mean, I am not suffering. There's no suffering going on over here, okay? No suffering. Oh, I might act like I'm suffering every now and then when I write, read some fucking article about some fucking libtard. <coughs> but I am not suffering. <coughs> I am choking to death. 
because there's no suffering going on. Let's control our terminology, Dimitri. There's no suffering anywhere in the United States, even the fucking homeless people outside here in the People's Republic of Fort Collins right now, in the cold and the snow, they're not even suffering compared to the suffering that many people have experienced in the past. This is first world problems all the way around. Okay. Once you're dead, it's lights out forever and you won't care at all if there's no greater reality. Well, yes, because if you die and there's nothing after death, you don't exist, you can't care. Yes, but once again, what's that have to do with anything? This has always interested me that the religious people always seem to make this argument. I mean, always. They often seem to make this argument. Well, if there's no life after death, you know, well, it, it's like statist. Because, again, it is the same fucking thing. Okay? Statist and religious people, same fucking thing. You're looking outside of yourself to have something to give your life meaning. Because you can't find the meaning for yourself because you're either stupid, lazy, or stupid and lazy. It's like when someone tells me they're bored. Well, I'm really bored. I don't have anything to do. I'm like, how can you not have anything to do? I, I have no concept of having nothing to do. You know how much shit I have on my list? How many things I could be doing, would want to do? Even if I got caught up, oh, I'm bored. No, I'm not bored. I can go bike riding. I can go hiking. I can play a computer. What are you talking about? And I have exactly the same reaction to people who say, well, that, yeah, how does your life have meaning unless God or the government give it meaning? Like, how the fuck, how can, you, how, can your life, how can you not have meaning in your life? How can you need someone else to show up and tell you that you're supposed to exist for a reason or that you have a meaning? Like, I, I, don't, I don't even have a point of reference. I can't even critique that because to... To I'm trying to think of the right word here, to critique something with a degree of intellectual honesty, um, that, that's not quite the right word. Integrity? With accuracy? Right? Like, I can critique. You know, like a baby killer. Because I can put myself in their position and I can understand, you know, okay, because you think the woman says it's her body and her choice and, and I can put together these train of things and I can see how they get there, right? I can see the path that they take that gets them to, you know, women should all be able to get free abortions anytime they want. I can see the path that gets women to thinking that they're oppressed by a patriarchy, that there's a wage gap. Like I can see this path that a person goes down that they believe in a wage gap or that they believe in global warming. I used to believe in global warming, right? I, I, but the path that, and I can see the path you go down to get to thinking, okay, there is a supreme being, there's a God. I mean, I can see that path. But the part of the path where you go, if there is no supreme being, my life has no meaning. I, I don't see that. I have no fucking point of reference for how you got there. That is so far removed from my life. That's exactly like when somebody says, I'm really bored. I have an idea. What if I take a fucking lead pipe and just beat the shit out of you until you're dead? Because you're not even human as far as I'm concerned. How can you be alive and have an IQ over, say, 40 and be bored? Like, retarded children don't get bored. 
Right? So I can't, I can't connect with that. And this is exactly the same thing. Well, but without God, you're my, because my, when you say without God, your life has no purpose, what you're saying is without God, my life has no purpose. So when someone says to me, well, but without God in the Bible, my life has no purpose. I, I can't understand how you got there. That is so far removed from anything that I can comprehend. And I'm not saying you're wrong because I can't comprehend it. I'm saying I can't comprehend it. How you can be a sentient fucking being. And here's the thing. I mean, what if, how do we make this not a stadium of babies question? Okay, so, so if you have people out there who haven't heard of, because once again, when people say you need God to have meaning in your life, they mean their God, right? They don't mean anybody else's gods. Well, okay, what about Buddhists? So do Buddhists, they don't believe in your invisible man in the sky. Do Buddhists have no purpose and meaning in life? If you have people living on an, you know, back back before the fucking missionaries brought the word of God across the ocean, you know, and oppressed all the poor indigenous people, right, did they have no meaning? Did they have no reason to live? Were they all at a moral and philosophical dead end? I mean, when you say atheism is a moral and philosophical dead end, does that only mean atheism? Does that mean all the other religions are not? Moral and philosophical dead ends? I mean, I, that's a question. I'm not trying to be a smartass. That's a question. So if only atheism is a moral and philosophical dead end, if other religions, Native American religion, Buddhism, Hindu, if, if all the other religions are not moral and philosophical dead ends, that means that they are moral and philosophical pathways. Okay, so then why is your religion the right one and the other ones are wrong? And are you going to tell me that, well, all religions are equally right? Is, am I going to hear that? Because now we're really getting stupid. Well, the Bible is the word of God. It's literally true, but then there's these other religions that contradict the Bible, but all religions are right. Okay, well, now you sound like a cuck. And I'm not saying Dimitri's saying this. I'm, I'm spinning off of, okay, look, just to be clear not making accusations that Dimitri is floating any of these theories. I've gone off into the void now. I'm spinning this. Let's get back to the letter here. Okay, once you're dead, it's lights out forever and you won't care at all if there's no greater reality. It's easy to say that it's all a product of evolution or about preserving a coherent social order, but even if evolution is true, you have to consider that some force is guiding it to a higher end. Otherwise, there's no point to anything. See, here we see it again. Well, there's no point to anything unless there's a God guiding things. See, I don't know how you get there. And I, so I don't know really how to critique this. All I, all I see here, and I, I probably said this seven or eight times already, but it, it is. What I see here is people that can't generate their own meaning in life. They can't, well, why am I here? I can't figure it out. Oh, there must be a God and God has a higher purpose and he's guiding me towards something so I can just go do what I want and pretend that God is guiding me because God has a plan, right? You sound like one of these women. Well, God has a plan. 
It's a cop-out. It's a way to avoid taking responsibility for your own life. It's a way to avoid sitting down and figuring out, hey, I'm alive. I'm here. I'm here right now. This is what I got to work with. I'm going to be gone one day. What am I going to do with what I've got while I got it? And then you have to do some actual fucking work to figure that out. But hey, if you just take the God pill, then you, well, God has a plan. Yes, God has a plan. It's standing around while all the people who believe in him get fucking cucked. That's God's fucking plan. And I don't think I've gone this far yet in the podcast, so let me go. If God does exist, God is a fucking cuck, and I don't want to go hang out with him. If I die and I go to wherever and guys, I'm going to say, you are a fucking cuck. You got all these people who believed in you and you fucking failed. I mean, the, the best explanation I can come up with is that they're if, if, with a God for why this is happening is that God just doesn't give a shit. And once again, if God, and I'm not arguing that God should give a shit, okay? But if God doesn't give a shit, why would I worship him? If I'm going to worship somebody, they better goddamn do something for me. Well, that's selfish. Well, yes. Yeah, it is. Why would I worship a God who won't even fucking smite my fucking enemies? It's not like he can't. Old Testament, God murdered shit tons of people on a regular basis. He's God. Well, God works in mysterious ways. Oh my God. That's emotions. That's feelings. Yeah, it's right up there with, well, if you, it's the, it's the power of, what is, what is, the law of attraction, right? That all these fucking seminars, it's mostly given by women to other women. If you just believe that you're going to get a good job, the law of attraction will make sure you get a good job. All right. Let me continue. Because how long have I been doing this? Oh, yeah, we're over an... Well, wait, hold on. Okay, yeah, we're over, we are over an hour. Not that that's a bad thing. That's why I'm doing this as an anarchy moment because I want to take as long as it takes to do this with no time constraints. Also, consider genetic un- entropy. God damn. Entropy. Also, consider genetic entropy where it's actually far more likely that we're devolving, not evolving. Yes, Dimitri, I've been saying that for years. We are devolving because we are paying inferior people to reproduce and implementing enough punishments in our society that the superior people are not reproducing. Now, I'm not sure what this has to do with God yet, but I'm sure you're going to tell me, so I will keep reading. Human DNA is subject to more and more mutations, and in a few thousand years, we will go extinct. Eventually, the universe will collapse in on itself and succumb to death heat. Now, that's a black pill. The only antidote is the God pill. Okay, but see, you've stated facts. Humans are devolving. Human DNA is subject to mutations. A few thousand years will go extinct, probably. Eventually the universe will go bye-bye. Okay, yeah, these are all facts. Okay, so if I believe in God, so let's say that right now I suddenly start believing in God. Will humans stop devolving? No. Will human DNA stop mutating? No. Will humans not go extinct? No. Will the universe stop collapsing and dying? No. How does getting God pilled fix any of this? Once again, Dimitri, you're you're you seem to be focused on your your feelings 
as opposed to solving anything. Right? The, your email, my interpretation of your email so far is it's mostly about, well, but if you be God-pilled, then you'll have a purpose in life and you won't feel bad and you'll have a reason. This is all just feelings. You're not solving any. See, this is my, this is the biggest fucking argument I have against the God pill. It's not the God part. It's the fact that you're all cucks and none of you are doing anything. Oh, you're God-pilled, but you have homosexuals in your churches. You're God-pilled, but you're sending your children to public school where they're told that there's no such thing as boys and girls. You're God-pilled, but there's trannies reading stories to your children in the motherfucking public library. You're God-pilled, but you send your daughters off to college where they're told that all men are rapists and they're turned into lesbians. Okay, you're God-pilled, but your children have tattoos and dye their hair purple and stare at their cell phones all day. You're God-pilled because you're a failure and you know you're a failure and just like a goddamn woman, you need something to protect your fucking emotions. If you God-pilled people, I don't know, went out and started shooting heathens or something, I could get on board with that. But none of you have the balls. You put your little fucking rainbow flags outside your churches. Homosexuals are welcome here. <laughs> Don't discriminate. <laughs> I mean, did God tell you that? Is that in the Bible? <sighs> I recommend F.R. Robert Spitzer's Quartet. I don't know if that's a typo. It's supposed to be Mr. Or if FR is short for something like Friar. I recommend Robert Spitzer's quartet discussing the various evidence for the Christian God as a starting point. Finding true happiness, which addresses much of what you're talking about in this podcast. The soul's upward yearning. God so loved the world. The light shines on in darkness. Ultimately, no amount of proof of Christianity. Can you have proof of Christianity? If you have proof, then you don't need faith anymore, right? Like, I don't have faith that I can't walk through walls. I have proof that I can't walk through walls. If you have proof of Christianity, you have proof that God exists and that Christianity, the cocked religion, is... I'm sorry, which... I'm which uh, Dimitri, I'm sorry. Which version of Christianity is the right one? I'm just curious. Whose interpretation of Christianity is the right one? Which one is the proof? Which version of Christianity does the proof support? Ultimately, no amount of proof of Christianity will ever be enough for someone who wants to shut themselves off from God. And nothing can help people who want to shut themselves off from being responsible for their own feelings and being responsible for finding their own goddamn purpose and being responsible for being an adult. Most of us don't want to be accountable for our own actions and want to think that... Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, sorry, I misread that. No, wait, I didn't. Wait, hold, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Most of us don't want to be accountable for our own actions and want to think that we can make it on our own. Most of us don't want to be accountable for our own actions. Yes, and those are called women and people who are God-pilled. Okay, but Dimitri, you're the one who can't, you're, you're the one who doesn't want to be accountable for your own actions. You want God to tell you right and wrong and give you a purpose. 
When someone else is telling you right and wrong and giving you a purpose, you're not being accountable. Because once again, if you're just doing what God, when God shows up and if God says, you know, whatever, kill your son or make war, you just do what God says. You know, why did you do that? Well, God said so. I'm confused about how you think that. Because again, let me try to do the inverse. You're saying most of us don't want to be accountable for our own actions, which I think what you're saying is that people who have accepted God are accountable for their own actions. I suppose I could see where he's going because if you're making the argument that... Okay, let me flip back here a second. I'm trying to stick with this. If you're making the argument that, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go down this path too. If I don't forget, but let me finish this. If you're making the argument, he says here, ultimately, blah, 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 atheism, moral, philosophical, dead end, okay? Without a transcendent reality, you're left with nothing but deterministic materialism. It says, ultimately, you have no free will since your consciousness is just a product of some chemical reaction. Okay, so if you're coming at it from the perspective that if there is no transcendent reality you don't have free will because you're just the product of chemical reactions. Okay, from there, I can see how you would say people don't want to be accountable for their actions because... The connection here is that without the transcendent reality, you're just the chemical reactions. You can't control the chemical reactions. Therefore, you're not accountable for your actions. Okay, I think I... I don't know if I explained that well to you, but I think I understand how he's getting there. So maybe it makes a little bit more sense now that I've thought it through. What he's trying to argue. Now see, here's the other problem I have with this. And I've talked about this before on the podcast, but we should talk about it again since we're talking about God. So when you make this argument, you being a general or whatever, or Dimitri, we make the argument atheism, bumble dead end, and you've got the, ultimately you have no free will since you're just a fucking chemical reactions and stuff like that. Here's the thing though. Okay. The human brain is neurochemistry. The human brain is chemical reactions. Now, if we, and I'm not necessarily saying Dimitri's making this argument, and I'm extrapolating again. I think he's going in this direction, but I'm not trying to put words in his mouth. If the chemical reactions are not true consciousness, if the chemical reactions are deterministic, if the chemical reactions don't have self-awareness, and you have a soul, and the soul is what brings the true consciousness and is that which overrides the neurochemistry and enables free will. Now, does everybody have a soul? 
or do only people who believe in God have souls? Because if everybody has a soul, then the argument about, well, you're only neurochemistry and you don't have free will is invalid. Now, if you're going to make the argument that only people who believe in God have a soul, that sort of screws up your thing about how there's a soul given to the baby at conception or, or you know whatever it is, assuming that's even still an argument. I'm not that far. Again, I, I, can, I can label. Be, it's fascinating. <clears throat> I'm an atheist, and yet I can figure out abortion is murder. There's a whole lot of so-called Christians out there who think aborting babies is totally okay. And yet, I'm the one who's at a moral and philosophical dead end, according to Dimitri. That is fascinating to me. Fascinating. So, unless the soul is bestowed upon people when they decide to start believing in Christianity as opposed to not believing a religion or believing any of the other religions. Well, that seems kind of weak, lame. I mean, is there a reference for that in the Bible? I mean, if all humans have a soul, which I suspect, if there is such a thing as a soul, I suspect everybody... Well, I mean, there's a few exceptions. Yes, here it is. I mean, there's the Jews. <laughs> I've been trying to figure out where I get a fucking Jew joke in here. There it is. I mean, okay, Jews do. Okay, Jews and gingers don't have souls. I mean, we know that, but everybody else probably has a fucking soul. So I get. I don't know. Maybe unless you believe in God, your soul doesn't activate or something. Right. My point is that either nobody has a soul or everybody has a soul. And so if it's the soul that gives you free will, well, and everybody has free will. Whether or not you believe in God and Jesus getting nailed to a fucking tree doesn't seem relevant to me. I kind of spun off in a weird direction there, I think, and I'm not sure I completely connected the dots. But once again, it's it's a theological question. How how did exactly I get there? Eh, I don't remember. Anyhow, he signs off with "Best of luck, brother." Thank you, Dimitri. I appreciate it. As again, thank you for a well-written, intelligent response. And even though I disagreed with you on almost everything, that's less relevant than the fact that I appreciate you taking the time. And, you know, it made me think. I had to work through some stuff in my brain. Hopefully made for some good podcasting for the listeners and they can listen and they can hear what I said and they hear what you said and they can think about it and make some decisions. Between the two of us, maybe we'll make somebody's life a little bit better. You know, whether they decide maybe they're going to find Christianity, get their shit together. Maybe they're going to say there is no God and I got to start being responsible for myself and stop being a fucking pussy and they'll get their shit together. You know, whatever. As long as somebody gets their shit together, we did good. All right. So we, we have fulfilled our function today here, Dimitri. We have kicked ass and taken names. And yeah, I think I'm out. <laughs>